Good morning and welcome to Echoing God's Word, the radio program sponsored by the Office for Catechesis and Youth Ministry. I'm Amanda Thompson. And I am Javier Castillo. And we are your hosts for a very special program on the Triduum and Easter. We're excited to have Father Jim Mackle home with us today. Father Jim is the Director of Biblical Formation for the Department of Parish Life Information. Welcome, Father Jim. Good to be here. Father Jean, could you tell us a little more about yourself? Well, I've been a priest of the Archdiocese of Chicago for nearly 39 years now, and 13 of those years I spent in parish work and as, associate, as an associate pastor at Our Lady of the Wayside in Arlington Heights and mm-hmm. Santa Maria del Popolo in Mundelein. Wow. During that time, I studied, did the studies necessary to get my doctorate in Scripture, and for 23 years I taught Scripture and chaired the Scripture department at the seminary. And then the Cardinal asked me to take over the job that I have currently as Director of Biblical Formation, implementing the uh, Apostolic ed- Exhortation Verbum Domini in the diocese, which is quite a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. No small task. No small task. <laughs> We're excited to have you with us today, and let us get started. Could you tell us about the Triduum, what it is and what the words mean, especially, you know, today... This, the connection, many people is focusing more about ashes, palms, or Palm Sunday, but they don't focus and they don't even pay attention about the the Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, or the Triduum. So how even we can let the people know and make the connection? Okay, about. well, starting off, Triduum comes from two Latin words, tres meaning three and dies meaning day. So it's three days. And it happens to be the three days that are at the end of Holy Week that we'll celebrate next week, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. These three days celebrate the most significant events in our faith, the institution of the Eucharist at the Last Supper, the the Passion and Death of Christ on Good Friday, and then the Resurrection of Christ on Holy Saturday. And also, we have a lot of differences in the liturgies for these three days. Holy Saturday and Good and Holy Thursday are masses, but there's a lot more involved than just the normal mass that we would attend. Good Friday is really not a mass. It's called technically the mass of the pre-sanctified because there is no consecration. So let's look at each of the three and see what we can see in terms of it. Holy Thursday, basically the evening Mass of the Lord's Supper, has two focuses. One would be the Eucharist, obviously, since at the Last Supper Jesus instituted the Eucharist, and we see that focus in the readings also, in the second reading that comes from uh, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, where he gives the actual institution narrative of the Eucharist as it was uh, given to Paul, as he received it from the Lord, as he says. You know, and we see a form of the, Euchar- of the institution narrative of the Eucharistic prayer that we use at Mass in that. The other focus of the Holy Thursday liturgy is service, Mm -hmm. and that's seen in the gospel, where we would expect a gospel with Jesus again instituting the Eucharist, but they chose the gospel from the Last Supper, the Gospel of John, where Jesus washes the feet of the disciples Mm -hmm. and acts in service to the disciples. And then after that gospel reading, there is a reenactment of that washing of the feet by the celebrant of the Mass with the people from the congregation. And I'd like just to take one section of that uh, washing of the feet text where Jesus says, if I, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you an example to follow. And so Jesus serves the apostles as an example. And then he is doing that as an example so that the apostles will serve others and that we, as his people who have received the word from the apostles, will also serve others. So it's Eucharist and service that we see highlighted significantly in the Holy Thursday liturgy. And then, of course, after the gospel reading, there is the formal mandatum, the command, a new command I give you, love one another, which is then manifest in the washing of the feet. It'll be interesting to see Pope Francis on Holy Thursday. Yes. I'm sure he will be washing the oh, feet I'm sure of the people. Oh, I'm sure he will. <laughs> I'm sure he will, definitely. <laughs> and then we have the Eucharistic prayer and the liturgy as we're used to it. But again, I think that institution narrative in the Eucharistic prayer has a special sense on Holy Thursday night because this is the night we commemorate when that was done the first time. Mm. And then after communion, 
Normally, we'd say the prayer after communion and then everybody goes home, but there's an additional ceremony, if you will, and that's the transfer of the Blessed Sacrament. And so there's, there's a procession where the Blessed Sacrament is brought with the Pange Lingua, the song being sung uh, by Thomas Aquinas, a very strong Eucharistic hymn, through the church to wherever the place of repose is. And then there's an altar that's specially decorated, and the Eucharist is placed in the tabernacle of that altar, and people then take time for the rest of the evening in adoration of the Eucharist. And so we have, we have adoration that night also. There's also a tradition, I think, in some parts of the city where people actually go from church to church to church to spend time in adoration of the Eucharist at various places. It's a sort of a mini pilgrimage. Yeah. So that, that's really the essence of what Holy Thursday is all about. It's celebrating the nourishment that we receive in the Eucharist and the service that should flow from that nourishment. That's beautiful. Now, Good Friday is a completely different uh, type of liturgy. It's uh, a three-part liturgy that concentrates basically on the passion, death, and resurrection of Je- or the passion, death, excuse me, not the resurrection yet, <laughs> of Jesus. Don't jump the gun. Let's not jump the gun, right. So I just have a quick question <laughs> sure. that people might ask. Why call it Good Friday? Jesus is being crucified. Why is it Good Friday? Well, Jesus was crucified for our salvation. Our salvation is a good thing. Yes. It's we we are reconciled with God. That's a good thing. Mm-hmm. So it's a good Friday. Yes. You know, even mm-hmm. though it's even celebrating though. death, which right. most people consider to be a bad thing or a, a sad thing anyway. Right. Again, paradoxical. Mm-hmm. Yes. Taking the word and meaning mm-hmm. or taking the incident meaning different. Exactly. Exactly. Now, Good Friday's liturgy begins very, very stark. There sometimes is even no procession. The celebrant and the ministers may be at the altar, and it uh, starts with a prostration, a laying before the Lord, a laying of oneself before the Lord to think and meditate. The only other time, really, that you find a priest prostrating at the altar is during the Litany of the Saints at his ordination ceremony, right. mm-hmm. where, he, where they invoke the saints. So there's that prostration of laying before the Lord, turning oneself over to the Lord, mm-hmm. and then a prayer, very, very simple prayer, and then the reading from Second Isaiah with regards to the suffering servant, the one who suffered vicariously for us. Okay, we are going to take a short break. I know that was very quick. We're going to take a break and come back and learn more about the Triduum with Father Jim. Thank you, and please stay tuned. Real men answer the call to the priesthood. Is God calling you? You know, I'm honored to be a priest for the Archdiocese of Chicago. I think it's great. There's a desire to want to give back and to help and to serve those who are especially in need. I think there's a wonderful opportunity for us to bring good news to a world that's very much in need. When I experience through my ministry someone being brought closer to the Lord, it's an exciting, thrilling moment. If you feel God's call to a priestly vocation, contact us at 312-751-8298 or visit our website at chicagopriest.com. John Paul II once said, Do not be afraid. Open your heart to Christ. The deepest joy there is in life is the joy that comes from God. Jesus is the hope of the world. The people are calling. The world is calling. God is calling. Answer the call to the priesthood. When a neighbor's cupboards are bare, we help. When our cupboards are bare, We need your help. The past few months have been the most difficult for families that come to Catholic Charities for food. Demand is up and donations are down. Help us restock our shelves so we can feed those in need this winter. Visit catholiccharities.net slash food or call 312-655-7525 to find out how you can help. You're listening to Equine's God Word. We are talking to Father Jim Malcolm and about the children and Easter. Let's talk about and finish about Good Friday. That was in the first part. Yes. 
So we were discussing Good Friday the last time, and I was talking about how the first reading is the uh, suffering servant, the one who, the just one who suffers vicariously for us, which Christ does, suffers at our behalf. And then there's a reading from Hebrews, and then the great passion narrative, according to John, is read. And we have a chance to actually think about and meditate what it is that we celebrate on this day. And then there is, as always after the gospel and homily, a series of intercessions, except that on Good Friday they're significantly elongated. And therefore, many different groups within the context of the church and even outside of the church that we pray for in a rather solemn form where there's a formal call to prayer and then a prayer and then a moment of silence, actually, for the people. And then that leads into a part of the liturgy that's unique to Good Friday, and that's the Adoration of the Cross, where the cross Mm -hmm. is formally brought into the church with the words, Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world, chanted three times, and the congregation saying, Come, let us adore. Mm -hmm. Adore Christ crucified. And then the cross is sometimes unveiled Mm -hmm. at this point, partially at each time that it's said, and then it's placed in a rather solemn spot in the church, and then the ministers of the ceremony venerate the cross, and then everyone in the church comes up. And that's an absolutely wonderful thing to see, to see people, families, fathers, mothers, children, all around the cross, praying, bowing, kneeling, kissing, just adoring the cross in whatever way they wish, remembering what great love God has for us that was manifested on that cross. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then the cross is taken to its normal spot, And the altar is very, very simply adorned. And the Eucharist is then brought from the repository that had been consecrated the day before, a very, very simple introduction to the communion rite, and then the people receive the Lord Mm. and can again thank the Lord and praise the Lord for the events of that day. And once communion has been received, then again, a very, very simple removal back to the repository clearing off of what's on the altar, a couple of simple prayers, thanking God for the cross and for the crucifixion and the nourishment that comes from the Eucharist, and then what's, what's a prayer over the people that says, bring your blessings down now upon these people who have stopped and meditated and celebrated your passion. Mm. And then the priests and the ministers leave in silence. And everybody leaves in silence. It's really the only time in the entire church year that you just leave the church in silence, you know, as far as things go. And then the altar is again stripped. There's nothing there. And the church is empty Mm -hmm. because Christ is now in the tomb. In the tomb, yeah. Then we move to Holy Saturday and the Easter Vigil which is probably one of the most ancient liturgies of the entire church year. And the Easter Vigil, celebrating Easter, concentrates first of all on light, then on water. Mm -hmm. And so light is the lighting of the church, water is the baptismal ceremony. So let's look at the celebration of light. Begins outside many times where there's a lighting of a fire, and then from the fire is lit the Paschal candle. Mm -hmm. The Paschal candle is then brought in procession into the completely dark church. And the image is that this one candle breaks the darkness of this dark church. This one candle representing Christ risen breaks the darkness of death. Mm -hmm. And then from that one candle... The celebrant's candle is lit, the ministers of the, of the liturgy's candles are lit, and then the people's candles are lit, and then you have greater and greater and greater light. And so that dark church, from that one light, shines in light, the light of Christ. And as the candle is brought in, the deacon will chant three times, light of Christ, and the people will respond, thanks be to God. Then... We have what's called a hymn that's called the Exultet. And basically, it's called Exultet from the Latin, meaning let us exalt or exalt. And it begins, exalt, O heavenly host, sing choirs of angels. And it goes through the entire of salvation history and shows and talks about, you know, O necessary sin of Adam, through which we were given so great a Savior, 
You know, oh, happy fault. Oh, truly blessed night. It just shows the wonderful joy of all, all of the sadness of the days before has now been transformed into joy. And we can sense that joy that the apostles had as they saw the risen Lord. Yeah. And it's visceral. Mm-hmm. It's a, with mm-hmm. the natural symbols. Yes, exactly. You feel it, see it, mm-hmm. smell exactly. it. Yeah. And then once the exultet has been chanted, then we go into the then lights are put on in the church, mm-hmm. and we go into the liturgy of the word, which is an elongated liturgy of the word. It can have four readings, or it can have as many as nine readings. But in the course of those readings, you go through again the entire of salvation history in the Old and the New Testaments, ending with a New Testament reading from Paul and then the chanting of the Gospel of Easter, Mm -hmm. the empty tomb, Mm -hmm. where the women go and they find the tomb is empty. And the announcement comes to them, he is risen. Surexit sicut dixit. He is risen as he said. Mm -hmm. And then the homily, and then once the homily is finished, if there are people to be baptized or to be received into the church, this is the night of baptism. This is the night of reception into the church. And so we move then to blessing of water, and the, the Easter water, as it's mm-hmm. called. And there is a, a long prayer. There's a, an invoking of the saints. As we heard before, as the cardinals marched into the conclave, they invoked the saints to pray for them. Mm-hmm. Well, again, Before sacraments, we invoke the saints to pray for the people who are about to receive the sacrament, to pray for the people who are about to be brought into the church, who are about to be baptized and confirmed. And so that great litany is prayed. And then the water is blessed. And this time, you know, with the, with the blessing of water, normally you just do a normal blessing of water, but it's very formal. The paschal candle is plunged into the water and, uh, you know, the water then is used, first of all, to baptize those who are being brought into the church, those who have been in the RCIA program. This is the culmination of the RCIA. Mm-hmm. They've been, you know, scrutinized during Lent, and now they are brought in and welcomed. And we need to take another break, so we will look forward to coming back, hearing more about the vigil, and then hopefully on to Easter <laughs> someday. Please stay tuned. The Catholic New World has been your faith resource for well over a century. Archbishop Patrick Fian recognized the need for a strong Catholic voice in 1892 and launched Chicago's first Catholic newspaper. Bishop Fian named our Catholic newspaper using a theme from the Columbian Exposition, the new world that gave people hope for a brighter future. 120 years later, the Catholic New World is bolder and better than ever. It's a rich and diverse resource for Catholics with stories of faith, hope, and inspiration. Cardinal Francis George and our team of columnists offer compelling insights on spirituality, catechesis, and evangelization. Look for our new e-edition at catholicnewworld.com. Easy access, simple to use, searchable and shareable, and free for a limited time. While you're there, subscribe or call 312-534-7777. Our look has changed, but we are still your faith resource. Subscribe now to The Catholic New World. We are back with Father Jean, the Director of Bible Call Formation at the Pastoral Center. And Father, uh, just the last uh, words for the audience about the coming week? Well, basically, I'd like to just finish up with the Easter Vigil and a little bit about Easter when we talked about baptism and those at the RCA being baptized. But then once the baptism and the introduction of the the bringing into the uh, church of the people who are being brought into the church is finished, then the entire congregation— lights candles again, Mm -hmm. and they renew their baptismal promises. So it's not just those people being baptized that day. It's everyone who now Mm -hmm. remembers their baptism, where they are inserted into this Paschal mystery that we celebrate on this evening. Mm -hmm. And that's the one difference with the Masses on Easter Sunday also. We don't say the Creed on Easter Sunday. We have rather this introduction Mm -hmm. of the baptismal renewal. And of course, we then... The priest then goes around, they renew their baptismal promises, and both on Holy Saturday evening and Easter Sunday morning, the priest then goes through the church and uh, sprinkles them to remind them of their baptism. 
And so we are called upon to celebrate the resurrection of Christ, but also our insertion into the graces of that resurrection in our moment of our baptism is recalled that day also. And so we really truly are moving from death to life as we go through the Triduum. Mm -hmm. And perhaps maybe each year and maybe this year we can say, what are the things in my life that I want to die to as I go through the Triduum and rise from on Easter Sunday? Excellent. And maybe that will be a more, you know, an even more spectacular celebration of Easter than we would have had before. Yeah, that's a good focus to think about coming into it. And like you, you know, describing everything, the the lights, the the water, it really just brings you through mind, soul, body, everything mm -hmm. is, is a part of it, which is the beauty of the Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I like to say these are the most ancient liturgies we have. Yeah, Absolutely. it's beautiful. Well, I also want to mention that Father Jim has a um, website called Word Made Clear. You can find it at wordmadeclear.org. And his teachings are so wonderful and passionate. Can you tell us a little bit about that website? Basically, the website started out a, uh, with a connection to the Archdiocesan Pastoral Plan. And so with the year for the uh, teen and the young adult, we did a commentary on the Gospel of Mark. And then this year with the year of Sunday Mass, we did a commentary on the Mass, the biblical background of the Mass. But also this is the year of Luke, and so I'm doing a corresponding commentary in the Gospel of Luke, which is about up to chapter 10 right now. Okay. It'll continue on, and there'll be um, sections added almost every week or every other week. And then uh, we're projected to do next year the Gospel of Matthew on it, so that the three Gospels, and then we, to leave, not to leave John out, we'll probably do John the year after. <laughs> so people can get a sense of what the Gospels are about from this, yeah. co complete with uh, discussion questions and an outline to follow that you can take notes on. So catechetical right. leaders can use it, yes. pastoral ministers and parishes yes. can use it. Um, anyone can. Anyone, anyone. can. Mm -hmm. And you're so easy to listen to. It's wonderful. You have a great way of teaching. So I urge you to go and check out wordmadeclear.org. Well, it has been a joy to have you on the show this morning. And I know it's very quick, and that's just a little touch of all the stuff that goes into the Easter season. Um, next week is the culmination of our Catholic faith with the suffering, death, and resurrection of the Lord. And we thank you for being with us today, Father Jim. Always happy to be here. Well, I also want to highlight a few more events that are coming up through the Office for Catechesis and Youth Ministry. We have a theological intensive that will be held on May 31st and June 1st at Bellarmine Retreat House in Barrington. And the theme for that is, We Have Recognized Him in the Breaking of the Bread. Father Louis Camelli will be the presenter for that. Yes. And secondly, we want to add is about the adult confirmation or confirmation for adults, basically. Uh, we are still running. I mean, we are continuing running the sites. Some sites are closed already, but some are, they are opening, especially in the Holy Name Cathedral for Bacchetti 2. And if you need more information, you can call me, Javier Castillo, 312-534-8032. Um, save the date for the World Youth Day Chicago, which will be celebrated on Saturday, July 27th. Um, the details of that are on our website now, so catechesis-chicago.org. Um, and also registration is up for the Eyewitness Teen Retreat on April 27th and 28th at Gear and Prep. This is an engaging, inspirational two-day retreat experience for high school teens that will explore how different aspects of our Catholic identity are present in Sunday Mass and encourage teens to go forth and be church after church. Priests, were, um, if you're interested in that, check out our website, and Lisa Boris is the contact for that for registration packet and more details to come. Um, Strong Catholic Families is an initi initiative that will help parishes partner with parents. And for more information, you can contact me, Amanda Thompson, at the Office for Catechesis and Youth Ministry. So any parting words, Father Jim? Well, I'd say just to go forth next week and celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. And keep in mind those questions that yes. Father Jim mm -hmm. was saying about what we need to die to in the, in the coming week. So. And again, we want to thank you for being with us this morning, and please join us next month when we, we will talk about World Youth Day. Thanks for listening, and God bless you, and Happy Easter to all of you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs>